Greetings and welcome to the virtual worship service of Church of the Master Presbyterian Church USA, a virtual worship service for the ninth Sunday after Pentecost. I am the Reverend Dr. Taylor, pastor of this wonderful church. Please join us as we go forth in intentional worship of our triune God. Our call to worship. God meets us in our greatest need and satisfies us with divine presence and provision. In gratitude, let us worship God. Pray with me, please. Gracious and all wise God, our creator, our sustainer, and our friend, here we are once again in a position to worship you in this virtual space. We pray now that you will be with us and allow your spirit to just dwell in us as we go forth giving you our very best in worship. We thank you for all the many blessings that you have sent our way. And we ask that what we do here today will bless you and rise before you as sweet incense, and be pleasing in your sight. It is in the name of your Son and our Savior that we offer this prayer. Amen. call to confession. Let us confess our sins in the presence of one, of the one who believes in us and meets us at our very simplest need. In penitence and in faith, let us now confess our sins before God and one another by praying together now our prayer of confession in unison. God of compassion, we are sick. We have wrestled all night with worry instead of resting in you. We have asserted our own goodness instead of awakening to yours. We have turned away those hungry for your help instead of trusting you 
and feeding them from your limitless supply of blessings. Forgive us, heal us, and help us to hold on to you. We call upon you, for you will answer us, O God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Church, hear the good news, and it is good news. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross that we might be dead to sin and be alive to all that is good. I declare to you in the name of Jesus Christ that you are, I am, we are forgiven. Now go and do likewise and be at peace. Please join me for our prayer of illumination. Providing God by your Holy Spirit, feed us with your word that we might be filled with the bread of life. Amen. Our Old Testament reading will come from Psalm chapter 17 verses 1 through 7 and verse 15. Listen for the word of God. Hear me, Lord. My plea is just. Listen to my cry. Hear my prayer. It does not rise from deceitful lips. Let my vindication come from you. May your eyes see what is right. Though you probe my heart, though you examine me at night and test me, you will find that I have planned no evil. My mouth has not transgressed. Though people try to bribe me, I have kept myself from the ways of the violent through what your lips have commanded. My steps have held to your paths. My feet have not stumbled. I call on you, my God, for you will answer me. Turn your ear to me and hear my prayer. Show me the wonders of your great love, who you save by your right hand, those who take refuge in you from their foes. Verse 15. As for me, I will be vindicated and will see your face. When I awake, I will be satisfied with seeing your likeness. The word of God for the people of God. Our New Testament reading comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 14, verses 13 through 21. Listen for the word of God. When Jesus heard what had happened, he withdrew by boat privately to a solitary place. Hearing of this, the crowds followed him on foot from the towns. When Jesus landed and saw a, loud, and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them and healed their sick. As evening approached, the disciples came to him and said, this is a remote place and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the villages and buy themselves some food. Jesus replied, they do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. We have here only five loaves of bread and two fish, they answered. Bring them here to me, he said. And he directed the people to sit down on the grass taking the five loaves and two fish and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and broke the loaves. Then he gave them the disciples and the disciples gave them to the people. They all ate and were satisfied and the disciples picked up 12 basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. The number of those who ate was about 5,000 men besides women and children. The word of God for the people of God. Good morning. Pray with me, please. Father God, we thank you for this day. And we thank you for your grace and mercy that you continue to give, even when we may not deserve it. Continue to cover and protect us and our loved ones and continue to guide and lead us according to your will. Father, we ask that you 
Place your healing hands on those who are sick and wrap your arms of comfort around those who are grieving loss of loved ones. Father, we pray for our leaders. Grant them wisdom and guide them as they make their decisions that impacts not only us, but the world. Father, in our trials and tribulations and in our joy, we know that you are still God and you're still in control. We give you all the honor and praise as we pray the prayer that you taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thou art the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Ninth Sunday after Pentecost, I bid you peace, joy, and love. The sermon for this Lord's Day finds its basis in the gospel lesson and the Psalter text for today. To get us started, hear these words from the Psalm 17 that are omitted from the lectionary reading. Listen to the words of the psalmist. Guard me as the apple of the eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings from the wicked who despoil me, my deadly enemies who surround me. 
They close their hearts to pity. With their mouths they speak arrogantly. They track me down. Now they surround me. They set their eyes to cast me to the ground. They are like a lion, eager to tear, like a young lion lurking in ambush. Rise up, O Lord. Confront them, overthrow them. By your sword, deliver my life from the wicked, from mortals by your hand, O Lord from mortals whose portion in life is in this world. May their bellies be filled with what you have stored up for them. May their children have more than enough. May they leave something over for their little ones. Today I want to speak briefly from the subject, more than enough, more than enough. Pray with me, please. Gracious and all wise God, we give you praise and thanksgiving for your redeeming grace. By the power of your grace, you enter our lives and dwell therein, bringing about change and new creation. You expose dividing walls of hatred and hostility. You break down those walls through the power of your reconciling love. You place a spirit of love and compassion within us, a spirit that gives us new life and never-ending love. You do this through the power of your amazing grace, and for this we are thankful. Lord God, as we come now to this preaching moment, we ask that you continue the work you have begun in each of us. We open ourselves up to you, Lord. Let your word dwell sweetly within us so that when we leave this moment, we will be more like the people you created us to be. Now, God, for as much as without thee we're not able to please thee, mercifully grant that thy Holy Spirit may in all things that follow direct and rule our hearts through Jesus Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. Amen. More than enough. Here we are right in the middle of summer. The days are long, the heat and humidity are high, a sudden shower and a cool breeze are welcome sights. Yet in just a few weeks, the summer slumber will be gone. These summer months have traditionally called us to slow the pace and take a break. Summer months have traditionally called us to reflect, to rest and refresh. Summer months have traditionally afforded us opportunity to seek out family and long-lost friends, attend reunions, and make efforts to reunite, rekindle, restore relationships that are dear to us. Relationships that are dear to us, but that have somehow succumbed to the sameness of our everyday lives. But this summer has been different, very different. Yes, we are slowed down, not by choice, but by a very stubborn, uncontrollable virus. An uncontrollable virus that has caused us to rethink much of what we have taken for granted. So now... We make efforts to rekindle, restore important relationships out of an abundance of caution and the uncertainty of our days. And for many, instead of enjoying an easy, restful, slumbering summer, we have been embroiled in the heat of the heightened anxiety and hidden stressors of not having enough and not knowing enough. Moreover, instead of enjoying the typical summertime adventures of new places, new friends, new foods, we have succumbed to the weariness and sameness of sheltering in place, self-imposed quarantines, and sobering, divisive political foolishness. 
Indeed, this has been a summer unlike any other. A time when most of what we know is jumbled up and in a state of flux. Still, still we press on. Still we adjust to Zoom, YouTube, Facebook Live, Telemed, virtual any and everything, masking up, wiping down, six foot apart, high five, air high fives, and the list goes on and on. But hear this now. If we are successful with our adjustments, if we're able to remain hopeful and grateful, if we remain capable of experiencing joy and giving love, there is no doubt that it is due to our awareness of the grace, love, and care that God has poured into our lives. It is due to our faith in God and our awareness of God's faithfulness to us. Now, church, when we, we look at the gospel lesson through the lens of our current lives, we must, yes, we have to be impressed with how Jesus just changes his agenda and takes care of the people. We have to be impressed with how Jesus demonstrates through the healing of the sick and the feeding of the crowd that God's grace, generosity, mercy, and love are available to all. Yes, indeed, in this moment, he pushes pause and puts his mourning for John the Baptist on hold so that he can attend to those who are in need of comfort, compassion, confidence, hope, and healing. And he does this by teaching them, by healing them, by feeding them with more than they could ever imagine. More than enough. More than enough. So they can bless others in need. Now, when we look at the Psalter text in its entirety, we see one who has a faithful, intimate, relationship with God. We see the psalmist calling on God to right a wrong situation. We see the psalmist calling on God to save her life and protect her from the one who would overtake and destroy her. And as we take in the tone of the text, we note that the psalmist is confident and comfortable in making her request known to God because of her intimate covenant relationship with God. Yes, indeed, as she states her case and makes her appeal because she sees herself as the apple of God's eye, because she remembers and expects the protection of God's presence, because she knows something about God's steadfast love and grace. She wants and expects God to grant her some relief. Now, now, here is where the psalmist's petition gets interesting. You see, because of her relationship with God, because of its intimacy and its spiritual death, as she asks for her relief, she also asks God to bless her persecutors and their families with more than they need so that they might also bless others more than enough. Now, 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 back in that familiar gospel text of the feeding of the five thousands, we see the two fish and five loaves placed in Jesus' hands becoming more than enough to feed and satisfy the numbered or counted crowd of five thousand men, plus the multitude not numbered crowd of women and children we see that very little becoming so much more, that more than enough for the disciples to take away, for them to take away and bless others who were not present on that day. Indeed, I want to suggest to you today that in the miracle feeding of the multitude with two fish and 
five loaves of bread, Jesus made them and us aware that whenever we are in need, whenever we seek compassion, grace, love, forgiveness, healing, that Jesus, God, through the person of Jesus Christ, is more than enough for us. Yes, we all know that song. Carol Sumbler, director of the Brooklyn Tabernacle Choir, wrote it. Her choir sings it, as does Vicki Winans. Many of you know the words. The words are Jehovah Dreyer, my provider. You are more than enough for me. Jehovah Rapha. You're my healer by your stripes. I've been set free. Jehovah Shammah, you are with me and you supply all of my needs. Yes, you are more than enough. Much more than enough. You are more than enough for me. Hmm. Quite a powerful lyric. Wonderful words to meditate on in these uncertain days. Now, now, although the writer of this song creates from a historical criticism point of departure, she creates a theologically questionable dichotomy between the God of Israel and Jesus of Nazareth for our purposes today and during this, this current climate. The lyrics sum up the gist of our chosen text, for they point to the assurances that come with a personal, intimate relationship with God. They point to the assurances that can sustain you when you feel pressed down, wondering if you will ever ride, rise again. Sustain you when you feel weary, worn, broken, and bare, wondering if you will ever experience compassion and healing again, sustain you when you feel you don't have enough or know enough, and wondering if you can make it just another day. Those lyrics remind us that because God is Jehovah Jireh, God the provider, because God is Jehovah Rapha, God the healer, because God is Jehovah Shammah, God ever present. No matter what situation we find ourselves in, God will be with us to take us through, giving us all that we need and much, much more, more than enough, so that we can be a blessing to others. Beloved, there is no doubt we're living in challenging times. Still, I want to assure you today that if you reach out to God, if you create a covenant relationship with God, you can rest assured that in any situation, God will because only God can. God will be more than enough for you. I challenge you today to take the time in the days to come to think on, to meditate on, to pray on God's presence in your life. I challenge you to work on your covenant relationship with God. Trust it. Deepen it. If you can do that, I guarantee you, like the psalmist of old, you will find joy and peace in these curious times, and that all by itself will be the good news. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen.
We turn now to our church concerns for this ninth Sunday after Pentecost. We ask that you continue to keep those members of our congregation who are on our sick and recovering list in your thoughts and in your prayers. And please continue to keep those who are laboring under the load of bereavement in your prayers. We just this week received some lovely thank you cards from Mr. and Mrs. Steve Davis and Ms. Tracy Webb. So that is a sign that you're reaching out and, and touching them. And, and we thank you for just upholding them during this trying time. We ask that you continue to call in to our pandemic prayer ministry. Just stay connected. We're doing wonderful things Monday through Friday on our pandemic prayer line each morning at 9 a.m. Just come and share and bless one another. We want to turn our attention now to our upcoming back to school event. Yes, on Saturday, August the 8th from 1 to 2 p.m., we will have a back to school event in our church parking lot. Please come, please be prompt. Can't wait to see you for this drive by celebration. We turn now to our birthdays for the month of August. We celebrate with Elaine Adger, Tony Fields, Shanika Clay, Chris Cannon, David Brown, Maisha Armstrong, Nia Roberts, Diana Wilford, Katrina Knight, Carlton Bryson, Ann Bryson, Will Trice, Karen Thomas, Ebony Brooker, Jamel Cannon, Jennifer Weldon, Margaret Jacobs, and Betty Harden. Just happy birthday to all, and may God continue to bless you and keep you during this special time in your life. We'd like to thank our members of our congregation and our many friends for your continued, your continued generous giving to this ministry. It has made all the difference in the world for us. It continues to help us do the work that we've been called to in this community. We appreciate your extra efforts in regard to Midwest Food Bank, and we receive from Midwest Food Bank a, a thank you for our donation. So thank you once again for your support, and we ask that you continue to give and support this ministry, remembering that you cannot beat God giving no matter how hard you try. Our ways of support are through PushPay, PayPal, and you can send your tithes or your donations in through U.S. Mail uh, or make arrangements with our clerk of session for your offering to be picked up. Again, we thank you for all you do in the life of this church. We turn now to a parting word. As always, we'd like to thank our worship leaders for this Lord's Day. Elder Zeller Clay, fourth, Elder Kendra Matthews, and Elder Anthony Meadows. You are what makes this virtual worship possible with your dedication and your diligence. So thank you again for your contribution and to our outstanding musicians, Mrs. Sheila Wheat Harris and Ms. S. Renee Clark. You never disappoint and you always give us some inspiring music. So thank you again for your contribution. We are so glad that you took the time to worship with us on this ninth Sunday after We hope that something has been said or done during our time together that will make this week one of the best weeks ever. I'd like to ask that you now go in peace, knowing that God loves you, that Jesus died for you, and that the Holy Spirit is always around to support 
and sustain you. Now may the Lord bless and keep you always in God's tender care. Until we gather again, I am the Reverend Dr. Cecilia A. Taylor, pastor of the Church of the Master, Presbyterian Children's Church, USA, located in Atlanta, Georgia. Hope to see you soon.